Hi, this is Chris with King Grizzly. Elementor Pro offers some nice carousel widgets that let you showcase your testimonials, images, and other content. However, the navigation between them is fairly limited. Apart from being able to drag or swipe between them, like this, you've got the previous and next arrows, which appear on either side of the carousel, and you've also got the navigation dots below it, like this. But I often find these arrows up here aren't very elegant, and you can't really change them or style them much. And because they overlap with the edges of the carousel, they often obscure the edge of your content too. So what if we could design our own navigation arrows, and use whatever elements we wanted, like buttons, icons, or even images, which, when clicked, would allow us to slide through the carousel? And what if we could place them wherever we want on the page, rather than being tied just to the edges of the carousel? Well, I'll show you a way to do this, and it doesn't require any plugins at all. If you're ready to find out more, let's jump in. <laughs> Elementor's carousels actually use a third-party JavaScript slider component under the hood, so to speak. It's called Swiper, and you can read more about it at swiperjs.com. If we go to the site and click the API link, we can see that Swiper exposes a vast array of functionality, but only some of this is actually available within the Elementor editor. What we're going to do is add a very small piece of JavaScript code to our page that will let us access everything that Swiper's API has to offer. So let's start building our carousel and our custom controls. So we'll start here with an empty page. Now, what I'm going to show you will actually work with any of Elementor's carousels or the slides widget, but I'm going to use a testimonial carousel for the purposes of this demonstration. So let's first of all add a new section. And what I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of top margin just to move it down a bit so things are easier to see. So let's give it 200 top margin. Now you can actually add any content you want to a testimonial carousel. It doesn't have to contain just testimonials. So I'm going to show you a little trick that lets you do that now. I've created a few Elementor templates. Uh, as you can see here, I've got three items that I'm going to use in the carousel. And if we take a look at the first one, you can see it's just a standard section. It's very simple. It's just got an image and it's got a button on it. But of course, this is a template, so you can put whatever content you want inside it. So I've duplicated this a couple of times and each template has just got a different image in it for the purposes of showing this demonstration. So what we're actually going to do is insert these items into our testimonial carousel using their short codes. So at this point, all we need to do is make a note of the short codes for each of our three items. So 4833, 4826, and 4820. So we'll note those down and we'll be needing those in a moment. So let's go back to our page. And now we need to drop a testimonial carousel into our column. So let's grab one and put it in there. And now We'll delete the second and third item, and we'll just edit the first one. Now, we don't actually need any of this information in here from the default testimonial, so we can delete that text, we can remove the image, and we can take out the name, and we can take out the title. And now, all we need to do in the content is actually add that shortcode from our first template. So that was Elementor template id equals and the first one was 4820 and now we've done that all we need to do is copy it twice and then just change the id for the second and third one so the second one was 4826 and then the third one was 4833 and that's it so let's update that and save our changes. Now let's just make a few changes to some of the carousel settings. 
So we don't want to show the default arrows because we're going to build our own ones. Um, and we can remove the navigation dots as well. And let's not have it auto playing so we can just control it with our own buttons that we're going to build shortly. But we'll leave it on infinite loop. So the carousel comes round again as you scroll to the end of it. So let's update again. Now you may notice that the template isn't actually showing just here in the Elementor editor, so you won't see it until you actually preview the live page, so we'll do that shortly. In fact, let's just make one more change here to the carousel. Let's have three slides per view, so we've got three templates per page, so we can see the effect of the carousel a little bit better. So let's update that once more. And now let's switch to our live site. And if we refresh the page, and there we are, there's our carousel. We've hidden the navigation arrows at the sides. We've hidden the navigation dots. And all we can do now is drag and scroll or swipe the carousel to navigate through it. And it's on an infinite loop. So it wraps around at the end. So that's the first step. We have our carousel ready. So shortly we'll move on to building our custom controls to navigate through the slides. Now there's one final change that we need to make before we move on. And we actually need to give this carousel its own CSS ID so we can refer to it later in the code that we're going to write. So let's switch back to the page and we'll click on the carousel and we'll come to advanced. And under CSS ID, let's give it a name and let's call it My Elementor Carousel. Okay, and we'll save that. And now we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're ready to build our own controls for this carousel. So let's begin by adding a new section to our page that will contain the controls. So I'll add a new section and let me move it to the top of the screen. Now I'm going to use some icons as buttons for controlling this carousel, but you could use absolutely any kind of widget or element. It doesn't matter. Anything you can click on will work. So that's basically just about anything. So let me add the first icon and we'll use this as our previous slide button. So let's just choose an icon from the library. Let's look for an arrow. Let's use this one here as our previous slide. Okay, and now let's go to advanced and make the width inline auto. And then let's give it some padding all around as well. 20 pixels padding all around. Now I'll just duplicate this and change the icon for the right arrow, which we can use as our next slide. Okay, and there we have our two icons that we'll use as buttons. The only additional thing we need to do at this stage is to give each of the icons its own CSS ID, because again, we'll need to refer to these later on in the code that we write. So let's click on the first one. We're in advanced tab. Let's go to CSS ID and we'll call it my previous element, my previous element, and then click on the right arrow and do the same for that one. And we'll call that my next element. So let's save those changes. And then if we switch back to the page currently, we can see that we have our two icons at the top, but they don't do anything. So here they are, but they're just two icons. And at the moment we can still only scroll our carousel manually. So now it's time to write our JavaScript. Now, don't worry if you're not a developer, all the code you need is down below the video in the description. And although I will explain what we're doing with the code as we go along, you don't need to understand it if you just want to use it. You can simply copy and paste it into your own project. So let's switch back to our page and I'm going to add an HTML widget. HTML and I'll grab it and place it just here next to the icons. Now by using an HTML widget, this will allow the demo that I'm showing you to actually work with the free version of Elementor as well as Pro. 
Although the choice of carousels in the free version is restricted just to the image carousel, so do be aware of that if you're using the free version. If you are using Elementor Pro, I actually recommend adding this code to the custom code snippets instead, which you'll find in the Elementor menu in your WordPress admin. It's easier to keep all your custom code like this in one place, and it lets you run the same piece of code in multiple locations as well, so it's just that bit neater. But for now, we'll continue with this HTML widget. And we can actually add JavaScript code as well as HTML or CSS to this widget. So we're going to write some jQuery now. So the first thing we need to do is add script tags. And we do that like this. Let me make this window slightly wider so you can see what I'm typing. And we'll increase the size of this box as well. So first of all, we need to make sure that our code only runs once the page is fully loaded and ready. So we want to say jQuery document ready function dollar. Okay, and now we can start writing our code. As I mentioned before, Elementor's carousels use Swiper under the hood. So firstly, we're going to write a small function that grabs the Swiper container that sits beneath the carousel. And we do this by referencing our carousel's ID, which we set earlier, and the Swiper container class that's within it. So let's define a function and we'll call it get Swiper instance. And we need to create a variable to hold that instance. So let's call that swiper target, swiper target. And as I say, we reference firstly our carousel's CSS ID, which was called my Elementor carousel, and then the swiper container that's within it, which is swiper dash container. Now that we have our swiper container held in our variable, we need to query that instance's data cache with the key named swiper. Um, because this is a function, we actually want to return it as well to whatever is calling this function. So let's say return, and then the name of our variable, which is swiper target, and then the data cache using the key named swiper. So any code that we now write that calls this function will now get returned to it a reference to our carousel's swiper instance. And because it's a swiper instance, we can now call all of swiper's available methods. We can add event listeners to make things happen when certain events occur on the page, and generally just take full advantage of everything that swiper's API has to offer. Now, we want to navigate to the previous and next slides, so let's switch back to the Swiper API on their website. And if we come down to Methods and Properties, and being able to scroll between slides will involve calling a method. So let's come down to the Methods section, Methods, and if we scroll down, we'll see that there are two methods available slide next and slide previous, which is exactly what we want. And you can actually set the speed at which that slide occurs as well. So these are the two methods that we'll need to use. So let's switch back to our code. And we now need to add an event listener to each of our two icons to say what happens when we click on them. An event listener is just a piece of code that runs when a certain event occurs on our page. So that event will be a click on the previous icon. So let's begin by adding that one. So after the function, we'll need to create a reference to our previous icon. So that's dollar my previous element, which was the name we gave it earlier. And we want to say on clicking this element, we'll define a function. And in that function, we'll say what happens, which will be a slide to the previous element within our carousel. Now the only line of code that we need is to call our function that we wrote above. Um, because that function returns our swiper instance to us, we can then directly call the slide previous method on it. 
and you can set the speed in milliseconds to be whatever you want and I'm going to stick with 500 milliseconds so let's call our function which is called get swiper instance and then we directly call the method and that was called slide previous which we saw in the swiper API and then we define 500 milliseconds as the transition speed and then you can leave the second parameter as true and now what we need to do is simply create another event listener that does exactly the same thing for the next button so let's copy and paste that code and the next button was called my next element and the method for that one was called slide next and apart from that everything else is the same Let's just add some semicolons to end these statements correctly. And that's all there is to it. Let's save our changes. And now switch to our live page to refresh it and test it. And as you can see, our icons are now controlling the carousel, sliding previous and sliding next. And we can still drag and swipe on the carousel as well. Let's just add one finishing touch. Perhaps it would be nice to have the hand icon appear when we hover over our icons so it's more obvious that they're buttons. And we can do that by adding some CSS to our HTML widget. So we'll switch back to our page and let's add some style tags above our script tags. And we do that like so. And we just want to change the cursor to a pointer when we hover over either of our icons. So we can do that by referencing both of our icons using their CSS IDs. So my previous element, which was the name we gave it, on hover. And the same again, my next element on hover. And then all we want to do is change the cursor to the pointer. Let's save our changes and go and test the page one more time. And there you have it. Now when we hover over the icons, we now get the hand appearing, which makes it a little more apparent that they're buttons and they still slide between the items in the carousel. So that's it, we have our own custom buttons for sliding backwards and forwards through our carousel. We can use whatever elements we want, icons, images, buttons, etc. And they can be completely detached from the carousel itself and placed anywhere on the page. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, this doesn't have to be tied to the click of an element either. You can now make your carousel scroll whenever any other kind of event happens on the page too. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to see more Elementor tips, tricks and tutorials that don't take up too much of your time, then do please consider subscribing to the channel and click the notifications bell. I'm Chris with King Grizzly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.